What's up guys, welcome back. The holiday content continues today with my personal favorite side dish recipe, baked mac and cheese. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. And this episode is sponsored by Stamps.com. If you're looking for ways to skip the trip to the post office and dodge all that hectic holiday shopping traffic, why not save some time and money with Stamps.com? Stamps.com lets you compare rates, print labels, and access exclusive discounts on UPS and USPS services all year long. And really, it just makes sense, especially if you're a business that sends more mail and packages during the holidays like me. Whether you're selling online or running the office or a side hustle, Stamps.com can save you so much time, money, and stress during the holidays. Access all the post office and UPS shipping services you need without having to take the trip and get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. If you're anything like me and you spend more than a few minutes per week dealing with mail and shipping, Stamps.com is an absolute lifesaver. There you have it, folks. Save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com. I want you guys to sign up at Stamps.com slash Mr. Make It Happen for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitment required. That's stamps.com slash Mr. Make It Happen. All right, guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, you can't have mac and cheese without some good quality cheese. Today, we're using five different types, and they're all going to play an equally important role in this recipe. We're getting started with the mozzarella cheese, which is kind of the foundation for this. It's nice and mild, and it melts beautifully. Next, we have some mild cheddar. You could use sharp as well here, but I personally prefer mild for mine. The cheddar is here to add that traditional flavor and color. And next we have Havarti cheese, which is super creamy and buttery, absolutely perfect for baked mac and cheese. And then we have Parmesan cheese, which is one of my personal favorites for its savoriness. And last but not least, we have some smoked Gouda, which is obviously gonna bring some smokiness to the party. And those are the five cheeses that we're going with today, each playing a critical role in the recipe. Keep in mind, guys, you are free to use whatever cheeses you prefer, but you do wanna avoid picking cheeses that all have the same flavor profile because it can be overpowering in your mac and cheese recipe. And it's super important to taste your cheese when you get it home from the grocery store. That way you can kind of understand the flavor profile and know what you're working with. Plus it makes a good snack. And for my next pro tip, I recommend shredding your own cheese versus buying the pre-shredded stuff at the grocery store. When you buy those bags of cheese, they tend to have anti-caking agents like potato starch, which prevent the cheese from clumping up in the bag but it also prevents your cheese from melting nicely when we go to make our mac and cheese. And you guys know we gotta have our sauce smoother than a three day weekend. So if you ever feel like doing a quick experiment, just check out the ingredients list on the pre-shredded stuff that you get from the store and compare that to the block cheese that we're gonna shred ourselves. All right, so now that we've gotten that lecture out of the way, sorry guys, we're gonna go ahead and boil our noodles now. I'm using elbow macaroni and I like to use a combination of water and chicken broth. The chicken broth just adds another element of flavor to the dish. This step is optional, but it is Thanksgiving, so let's enhance the flavor as much as we can. So we're going in with one quart of chicken broth. This is low sodium, so I'm also gonna add a pinch or two of salt to this. We wanna start seasoning those elbow macaroni noodles early. So we're gonna bring that up to a boil and now we're moving on to our cream. My mixture that I like to use is one cup of heavy cream and two cups of half and half. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. And now my friends, it's time for the fun part. We're gonna get started on our cheese sauce, which starts with a roux, so we need to melt some butter in a skillet over medium heat. Today I'm using Kerrygold butter because it's my favorite. If you haven't tried it yet, you can find some at your local grocery store. So just work that butter around in the skillet over medium heat until it's fully melted. There we go, that's kind of what you wanna see right there. Once it's melted, we're going in with one of my secret ingredients, which is condensed sweet milk. Now, I know that might seem odd to some of you guys, but trust me on this one, it's not there to make the macaroni and cheese sweet. However, the sweetness does balance the flavor profile from all the acidity and sharpness from all the different cheeses that we're using. So give it a try, it is optional though. If you don't wanna use it, you don't have to, but we're gonna use it today. We're going in with about a tablespoon of that, and then we're going in with two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're gonna work that flour around until the raw flour taste is cooked off. About a minute or two is all it takes. It should form kind of like a paste-like consistency like you see right there. We're gonna season our roux with my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. If you haven't tried that yet, you can get yours via the link in my description box. There's a discount code there for you as well. You could also go in with a little Cajun seasoning too if you wanna spice things up a bit. We're gonna work that around, make sure the seasoning is well distributed, and then we're going in with our cream, which again was one cup of heavy cream and two cups of half and half. 
Another quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. Once we add the cream, we need to increase the heat to medium high and break out the whisk to make sure this sauce is coming together nice and smooth. You can use your rubber spatula to scrape the edges and scrape the bottoms just to make sure nothing's burning. And then we just want to bring this up to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, we're going to reduce it down to a simmer and your sauce should begin to thicken up at that point. So as you can see here, we've reached a gentle boil and everything's starting to thicken up just a little bit. So that flour is doing its job. Once it's gotten nice and thick, we're gonna kill the heat. So turn your heat completely off. This is important because we don't want the cheese to separate. If you add the cheese when the sauce is piping hot, then it's gonna separate. So at first we're going in with two tablespoons of sour cream. We're gonna give that a good mix, make sure that's evenly combined into the sauce, and then we're gonna start adding our shredded cheese that we did shred ourselves. You just wanna add a little bit of cheese at a time and allow that residual heat from the sauce to melt that cheese beautifully. Now, when it comes to cooking, guys, there's usually just a few small changes that you can make to your technique that make all the difference, and this is definitely one of them. So if you've ever made macaroni and cheese before and your sauce came out gritty, it's probably because you used packaged cheese. If your sauce was ever oily, it's probably because you added the cheese when the sauce was too hot. So these few tips will make all the difference in your macaroni and cheese this year for Thanksgiving. Definitely give this recipe a try and let me know what you think. As you can see here, our sauce is coming together beautifully. The cheese is melting nicely. It's nice and smooth, just like we like it. Keep adding the cheese a little bit at a time, stirring constantly and allowing that residual heat to melt the cheese into your sauce. For my recipe, I don't use an egg because I don't like the way that it reheats when you use eggs with your macaroni and cheese. It kind of just turns into a brick, but that's totally optional, guys. If you like a thicker consistency, you can add an egg to this, and I'll tell you when here in just a second. But as you can see here, this roux and this cheese sauce is nice and thick, and it's going to hold together nicely in our mac and cheese. Always taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference as well. That's what we're looking for right there. Look at that cheesy deliciousness. Oh my goodness. All right, now it's time to boil our noodles to package instructions. We got our chicken stock and our water up to a boil with a little bit of salt. We're gonna stir in those elbow macaroni noodles. We're using one pound of elbow macaroni for this recipe. After about eight or nine minutes, they should be about where you want them. Make sure you taste them for seasoning and hit them with a little bit of all-purpose seasoning just to make sure this macaroni and cheese is seasoned throughout. Stir in that seasoning and then we're ready to make our mac and cheese. We're gonna pour in that fantastic sauce. Wish I could give you guys some sound here. Oh man, look at that. So just add as much sauce as you think you need. If you were gonna go with the egg method, you could add the egg at this point. You just wanna make sure that it's not too hot when you add the egg, otherwise you'll make scrambled eggs. But for me, again, I don't like to add eggs to my macaroni and cheese, but it's totally optional. Now we're gonna take a little bit more of that cheese and add it in here just to add a little bit more cheesiness to the party. Plus, we gotta give our lactose intolerance folks something to talk about in the comments section. And then you wanna make sure that you set aside enough cheese to top the macaroni and cheese as well. Oh man, say it with me guys, looking good. Now we're gonna pour this into our casserole dish. We have our oven preheated to 375 degrees. We're gonna bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes or until we hit the three Bs, which are brown, beautiful, and bubbly. We're gonna smooth out the top and then we're gonna top it with the remainder of shredded cheese that we have, as you can see right here. I like to use a blend here. The white and the yellow cheese looks nice when it melts on top. So just spread it out nice and evenly. You don't want it to be too thick, but you do want even coverage. That way it melts beautifully and browns up nicely in the oven as you're about to see here in just a second. We're gonna place this on a baking sheet. That way we don't get any cheese to drip over and burn up in our oven. And that my friends is perfect macaroni and cheese. Tell your aunt to take the year off this year. You got the mac and cheese covered. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Buckle up people, this one's gonna be a good one. We got ourselves a cheese pull. The macaroni and cheese is browned and beautiful. We're gonna add it to a plate, get us a taste test. Where's my fork? Here we go. Moment of truth, let's see what we got. I think you guys know how this one's gonna turn out. And that's my recipe for mac and cheese. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you give your boy a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.